you see the presentation, guys? Yes. Good. So basically, the talk today will be React Native with Fusionic, and we will start with the agenda. So today we are going to talk about what is the difference between this, uh, like between the native approaches at all, uh, like in general, uh, to explore uh, the landscape with, which we have nowadays in terms of how to develop the mobile applications. And then we will focus on, on the React Native and Unix frameworks, the similarities and key differences between all them. Yeah. Also, you'll talk about the different business capacity in Cordova and Copa Unix. We will see what is that and what to use. I will provide some of my guidance how to use that. And I like demos, so I will show you a few quick start demos to like to have a native look, a native hands-on experience, how to work with those frameworks. And then we'll come to the um, guidelines, when, what to use and when. And then we will at the end have the topic battle. We will see how it will go on. So basically, who, who am I? Who, who I am? I'm, I'm as a tremendous application architect, but my journey started as a C++ developer at the desktop. Then I moved to the native, especially when I was developed few iOS applications when I was five, I believe. Then I have like some hands-on experience in the Android native. Helped guys with the Ionic the first version of Ionic and Cordova, I believe, because capacity didn't exist at that time. After that, I moved uh, to the native again, helped some guys with React Native. Now I'm leading a team with the Xamarin and the traditional Xamarin native the Xamarin forms. So basically, this is my experience, and I from my experience will <coughs> try to sum up my knowledge what we have with the mobile landscape. So basically, what was the motivation for this presentation? So as you know, I have three years um, working as a mostly with the I wanted to understand how the landscape mobile screen changed in those three years and just better understand what we have nowadays, probably refresh my knowledge a bit. And also, as you might know, we recently have the opportunity to have a free step into the new business courses. So also wanted to explore what we have there, what the quality of the school, et cetera, that also helped me to prepare those presentation. And I also give some recommendation to the courses at the end of my presentation. And before we start, yeah, I'd like to mention that feel free to interrupt me at any time. If you have any questions, we'd like it to be to more discussions as I like do some <laughs> given speech. So, if you have any questions, just feel free to interrupt me and we can go deep into it. So let's start from the, with the mobile landscape. So you know that we are, so what we have in our hands or now to about when we develop our mobile applications, yeah. So of course we have the pure nature approaches like the Android, mostly nowadays it's written in Kotlin, composite Kotlin in Java, of course. It, I also lift uh, most of the objectives of interoperability between them. In the web hybrid, we have um, nowadays most Ionic, which is used as a capacitor most nowadays. We have like the Cordova, but it's pretty old and can be used as Ionic, can be used themselves, uh, uh, but not very used often. Or probably like there are some existing application can you can use them in some existing applications to support them. And uh, this is like the web hybrid approach. That web hybrid approach, different from the pure native, that they mostly works in the web view. So we work with HTML5 web technologies, just packaged like the in web app shell and deliver that application to the mobile application, deliver the solution to the mobile application. And we have a few alternatives that are compiled to native. So you write in some language, but they are transpiled to compile it to native, is all of them also part of it. Yeah. For example, like native, some part is compiled to native. So the still logic relies on the JavaScript and and runs in the JavaScript the atom machine. We have also the native script. So this is quite similar to the React Native, uh, the difference between the Native script in Drag Native is that native script are mostly used as a web source for with Angular or Vue. Mm, 
JavaScript framework, React Native is tied to React. Uh, also, we have like the increasing the factor that is supported, uh, created, supported by Google. And we have like the Xamarin and Xamarin Native, Xamarin Force is supported and by Microsoft. But before we start, uh, I'd like to better understand the audience. So I'd like there to, to, to create, uh, to launch a pool. So guys, could you please like, um, answer the simple question to like to understand what is your experience what you most work in it will help me to better understand the audience and maybe to um, explain some bits more deeper if needed so let's wait a minute and give the audience chance to answer the question and then we'll continue Or do we have our results? Um, can we should wait a few, few more seconds? Okay, so I see that most of us worked with the native technologies. Also, we have, I guess, some React Native experience. Oh, that's, yeah. And the Marine Forks as well. That's nice. Good. Good. Ivan, sorry, uh, we have a question uh, from Alexei. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we discuss also Cordova? Cordova? Uh, okay, we, we will discuss Cordova. I have a few slides regarding Cordova. If Alexei has like some specific question on that slide, just feel free to ask your question and we can go to in details to it. Sure. So basically, what we have. Um, so in, in that talk, uh, I mostly will focus on Zeonic, especially Zeonic React and React Native, but we also can discuss a few things around here. Yeah. So basically, if you talk about like the React, uh, Zeonic React and React Native, so what is similar? They both use the JavaScript, they both use the React framework, so you should be familiar with React. And uh, what is different? The different is components and controls because since the React we have uh, the HTML5 controls. So if you are with Web, Web UI, you you don't need to do anything. If you work with React Native, they have the their own set of controls that are mapped to the native controls. So it's set controls and styling should be, and also like the layout and styling should be done differently because in the React we have also the CSS the, in the global web. In the React Native we have uh, the their own style sheets um, uh, that are quite different. Yeah, and also we have different in the native plugins and uh, from the U from the, like the user perspective of the usage, they're quite similar to use because they are all consumed in the JavaScript to, to the JavaScript APIs. But in terms of like uh, how many plugins we have and if you want to write your own plugin, the approaches are a bit different, like the interactivity layer is a bit different. So in that terms, they are different. So let's go, and also um, let's, let's go through all, the, all these frameworks through the different like the dimensions to better understand um, how we can assess that. So if we look through the paradigm or dimension, right ones is everywhere. So th that basically tells us that uh, about the code reusability. So if you can like reuse the code, uh, write code once and reuse it. Yeah? So we see that Ionic is the, like the leader here because you just write the same code and then the package it differently. There may be some minor tweaks, but in, in most cases, you have a great visibility within the two, two platforms. Yeah? 
and react native uh, like probably in the middle because you need to do different stylings and the control different on the two platforms. And of course, in the native platforms, you should probably write application twice in, 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 to adjust to, the, to, the, to those platforms. Uh, regarding also uh, metrics like RAND ones, yeah? so this is a bit different from the right ones because this is we're talking about mostly about the humans here. Yeah. If we can run the same, same concept, the same things, yeah, we can like leverage our knowledge, it, do, it doesn't give anything. Yeah. So, as you can see from that perspective, uh, they are quite similar React and React Native because they use the same concept. So, you can learn once the framework tools. Tools are a bit different, yeah, but they're pretty the same. But the framework stuff and the libraries are pretty the same, so you can run them once and use them everywhere. So let's go to the explore like what we have like in components. In components, we will see that uh, Ionic is more like a framework. It 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 provides you the full set of their own controls, and they also have a well maintained. Like the components libraries plugins that are hosted to the own site themselves. And React is most like a library. They provide you some basic stuff. And you, if you need something else, like the different controls or some plugins, you need to look elsewhere. They do exist on the GitHub, but you need to know, like you need to have like some vetted list of controls that you should use and set party libraries that you need to use in your project uh, beside, beside React. Yeah? So you just not like use React and have everything. In Unique, in most cases, you can start with Unique. For most use cases, you have everything that you need. So then let's, uh, yes, that, that was about the comp components. And this, the same is about like the party libraries. I mostly covered the same thing in two slides here. Yeah, so. So the previous one about the components and, and that one is about the different drivers of the plugins, uh, etc. So if you go in terms of popularity yet, so the coverage is that uh, the definitely the mobile frameworks are pretty popular. You can find the answers about them on the stack over for going in package, etc. You can definitely find the help. Ionic and the React, React is more popular than Ionic in that place, but Ionic is also popular and now is more mature than previously. If we, today we have like six versions of Ionic that can play with React, Angular, or View frameworks, yeah, but still React Native are uh, a bit more popular, yeah. And that like the native script is a promising project, but still I don't recommend to use it because it's like, not very popular and you might not find the help and you stuck to some obstacles or issues. And if we talk about in terms of performance, so as you can see, React Native provide almost like the native-like experience because they use the native controls and they render it natively. And the only renders in the web view, so you may expect worse performance here, but worse, it doesn't mean bad, yeah, because you know that nowadays the mobile device are quite powerful in most cases, and in most cases you will not see the big difference, especially for the some simple applications. Yeah? And the, like the last uh, probable dimension that we can look to those frameworks through the native capabilities. Uh, so definitely the native application, you have the all native access to anything. In the Ionic side, you do have a few plugins like the access to the camera, native storage, etc. Even for the Bluetooth that you can utilize and the most application, it will be just fine. React Native provides you a bit more. You can have like the, some encryption storage, etc. even access to it so so this is it do the the better job here 
but they're quite familiar in most cases for most simple applications we can interchange them and uh, also let's see in what products in the worldwide uh, which product is used here so as we can see that react are more popular than ionic ionic used in few mobile applications they are mostly used by enterprises for the like this i mean house development and uh, the applications react native are uh, most used in some startups and have in most times broader use so guys do you have any questions so far it seems no okay so let's go to the so here i put like several like the ionic usages so as you can see the ionic are used by electronic cards, uh, home depot, and also several like the enterprise uh, applications, applica enterprises, they mostly use to develop their own uh, applications, mostly for enterprise use, uh, like some onboarding, onboarding uh, applications or like, um, um, like some managing their own stuff need. And React Native, I use for some big companies like the Facebooks, who has created it. Also, like the Sky, used by Microsoft Skype, Discord, Uber, Wix, Salesforce, use the React Native. So, if we compare from that perspective, we can see that React Native are used more often than the Ionic. So, here let's talk about uh, briefly about what is Cordova and a capacitor. So recently, the Ionic team created Capacitor as a replacement to the Cordova. Basically, what is Cordova? Cordova is um, like, a, we can consider it like, the, like a native runtime. So because any web framework like React uh, um, runs in the web view, and you need some runtime that you like provide a package that application in the web view, and also you need some interview layer to call some device capabilities. So they, they use it exposed by the plugins to access the camera and AP store it, et cetera. So that things were started by first phone gap, Adobe phone gap, and then they open source like the Apache Cordova in, in 2007, something like that. And uh, in recent years, the capacity, actually they only created the capacitor and time replacement and they suggest you to use capacitor instead of Cordova in most cases. This was supported by the same team like the Ionic framework. So the Ionic team support both capacitor Cordova and capacitor and Ionic. So they nowadays works more, more works better together than Cordova. You can still use Cordova, but the preferred way nowadays is uh, to use capacitor. And uh, here you can see the few differences between the Cordova and Capacitor. So Cordova was created as something like the platform abstraction layer. So you basically have some config XML file that you can provide a few configurations, for example, your bundle ID or your app ID for Android, permissions that you use. And during the build time, it generates like, the platform specific projects and package them and deploy to device. And you cannot see those platform specific projects. In case if you have some issues with that, like the platform specific projects, you can have a bad time to figure out how to fix them. Yeah? And that was why one of the reasons why the Ioni created a capacitor. Capacitor, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, attracts the platform specific project as a source asset. So they just gener generate the usual Android projects that can be built by Gradle or even in the, in the Android Studio. And also they created the Xcode projects that also can be built as so the Xcode CLI or in the Xcode if needed. And uh, you have like the better control, you can better understand what is going on underneath. And if you need some tweaks, you can like the open native projects and tweak it. Yeah? So you don't need to deal with it abstract layer and that code generation that sometimes can uh, puzzle things in it. 
And uh, another difference in between the capacitor and Cordova is that uh, capacitor installs uh, as a local CLI. So when you install the, the you know, dependence, it's installed locally instead of globally. And it's easier from the like the vertex perspective because frameworks sometimes require a specific version of the capacitor. And if it's installed locally, you, you have it in the you know, packages, you know how to use it, and you can like avoid some version issues that you can have instead if you install that uh, to globally. So it's also about a better things. And another difference is that plugins in the capacitor are consumed as libraries on the other side, uh, consumed like the Cocoa Pods on the Android side, they consumed as Android libraries. And in the Cordova, most plugins are just copied to the source code, do the code generation and, and build it. Yeah, so you can have some like this some in a space config, so other things uh, that also can have some issues there. Do we have some questions? Because I've heard some chum. No, it thinks not. Okay. So let's continue then. So basically, set speeds that I wanted to show you about the differences. Because if you have some questions, please ask. If not, we will continue with the demo. Okay. So it seems no questions. And I believe that they answered the question regarding the Cordova. If not, just tell me what you need to know and then we'll try to do more to better, to better answer it. And so let me just hook up my phone. Uh, yes. sorry, sorry, can I ask just here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, sure. I'm, uh, first of all, I'm sorry if I'm doubling the question because I have a problems with uh, uh, was with my uh, sound at the beginning the question mm -hmm. is uh, cordova and uh, ionic i'm the be mm -hmm. beginning of the st study this uh, this cordova because we have this new project on cordova mm -hmm. and uh, when i studying the the um, documentation it some says that uh, ionic is not suitable for a uh, large application uh, instead of cordova uh, that and the, the, the better usage of Cordova if we considering these two technologies. Uh, just interesting what you think about this and also uh, do you see the future of Cordova uh, considering not old projects but new projects? Thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so in that, in that perspective, um, uh, so uh, let's separate a few things here. The ONIC is it's like a framework uh, mostly it's not a framework. Okay? We can consider it as a glue or tool chain, yeah? because you only consist with, uh, with, with the UI framework. So we only now can support, let me just show like a bit of documentation as well. Uh, so here we can see like how, how many components you support. And here in the, in the documentation, you can see that they, support uh, so yeah th those things those things are regarding the controls itself but if you go to the ionic framework here we can see that it supports three uh, three ui frameworks and get reacting view so basically ionic is like a glue or maybe we can sell it like some native shell yeah, that you package together maybe we can also consider it like some like the package manager yeah that will package our solution and, to, and install it to the mobile application. And the Ionic to do that packaging, they need a runtime. And runtime can be either the capacitor or Cordova. That runtime is basically your native application that will like have the main screen. That main screen will have the view in it and it will install like that view and it also has have some interoperability code that will connect you so with, uh, with all of you to talk to the device capabilities through plugins like to access camera or to access the native storage at all etc so basically we cannot um, like um, if we 
try to evaluate like the Ionic versus Cordova, it's not a good comparison, yeah? Because Ionic needs something, needs some runtime to run, yeah? The capacitor of Cordova, you cannot use Ionic without like Cordova or capacitor, they, they need it. Yeah? Uh, because it's like the runtime that runs the, the JavaScript framework and HTML5 framework. Yeah? And in terms of uh, Cordova, Cordova started like one time ago and they can do package not only Angular React with you uh, applications, you can pack any other like the web framework. You can pack like the, from the nowadays, like the, from the some times ago, you can pack like the jQuery mobile, OpenCow.js or some other uh, web, techno web technologies through the Cordova, like set up them in the native application. Yeah? So they were first, so they are still supported by Apache. They support the broader, uh, they support the broader uh, JavaScript frameworks. Uh, but the difference between Ionic and, the, for example, we can use Cordova without Ionic itself. Yeah, we can like wrap, get, get the React, wrap it into Cordova without Ionic. But what we will miss, we will miss that uh, styled preset of controls. So basically, in Ionic, for example, we have like, uh, let's, let's check that list, yeah. Uh, so as you can see, all Ionic components have like the ion suffix. And uh, here you have like the ion list here. Yeah. And, the, and the benefit of this pre-style controls so that they have already some appearance built in. So they have a supported looking feel for the iOS or for the Android material design. Yeah. And if you like try to use React without Ionic, you can still use it, but you will end up using not the ion controls, but div spans, etc. You, you need to style them by yourselves. And uh, this is like the extra work. Yeah? Here you can reuse the already built-in preset controls and pre styled for the mobile for two, like the major platforms like the iOS and Android. Did they answer your question? Uh so do you mean the Ionic uh, with Cordova, it's like React for uh, vanilla JS? Mm, React for vanilla JS. I'm not sure what you mean by React for vanilla JS. Uh, like 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 a, a library what uh, proposed the uh, UI. Uh, not okay. Get got you. So React versus vanilla JS. If I got you right, it, not quite. So uh, Ionic versus Cordova. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, your project without any CSS framework, or with like the Bootstrap or like the framework framework file something like that. So it's most related to the controls and styling, yeah, not the framework itself. Because, because in, as in Cordova or in the Ionic, you need to use some framework, for example, React. Yeah? The difference will be that in the Cordova, you can as utilize the bootstrap for the styling or something else. And in the bootstrap, you need to do some tricks so they look, looks natively on both iOS and Android. And then you can provide you those stylings. So you can just put like the Ion button and it will look like the mostly native button on the iOS and mostly native button on Android. They still be rendered in the review, but they try to look as close as possible to the native AI. Yeah? If you use like the React in Cordova without a unit, you need to do the styling by yourself. Uh, so, so it's just about styling? Yeah, that's mostly about the styling, yeah, the controls and styling. Okay. They also provide some like, dynamics here. Yeah? You can also, another analogy can be like the jQuery. Yeah? In case of any OGS or jQuery, so they provide mostly the styling and several events set up those controls, yeah, but mostly in terms of styling. Mm -hmm. Okay, get it. Thank you. And if uh, just to repeat what you think about the future uh, st start projects with this uh, technology, I mean, uh, Ionic and Cordova instead of uh, directly from mm -hmm. React Native. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I start a new project, mobile project, I, in the like the hybrid approach, not the, like React Native, I will like better start, so just starting with Ionic and Capacitor, not even Cordova. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Because capacitor is more, more modern uh, runtime and it's maintained by the same team like Ionic. And you can even create the progressive above with the capacitor. I'm not sure if the Cordova supports that. Uh, and in terms of the recent development, I see that capacitors evolve Cordova. It's more like in the maintenance mode. So if I start a new project, I just use Ionic with capacitor. And basically it's default now. So if you like, we choose the latest version of Ionic VT6. When you create a project, it will hook you up with the capacitor. You have an option to create it with the Cordova uh, if you need it, yeah, but, but I'd rather not to do it if you have without having a good reason for it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay. So basically, this is like the UIF controls. And here also, uh, we can see the, some examples of controls for the React. Like, instead of using given inspires, you need to use view, et cetera. Uh, so here you can see like, the React um, renders, yes. Yeah? So you put like a view and it will render this image and it will render to the native image on the Android and the child image on iOS. They do it by themselves here. Yeah? Uh, but what we'd like to show you how the native experience look like for those who are not, what the development experience look like for those who are not familiar with it. Let me just um, show you how it will look. Let me just zoom it a bit. Uh, okay, do you see it well or maybe I need to zoom a bit bigger? Okay, so basically, let's, let's do some publication. Uh, let me just also open a visor. I will show you my Droid phone. Okay. Okay, so I hope you can see the screen. So let's create a simple image picker and I will show you the simple way out and how you can access a camera. So let's create a project. Okay. No, okay yeah. Course. And then, so in order to, to play with Rack Native, actually, Rack Native have also, if you like the bootstrappers uh, for the project, I suggest you, if you like, the new person to start this expo. The expo is actually a site um, that, uh, that tried to make the React, na React Native experience more seamless, especially for the for the, like, the new people. And we will use that expo, uh, create expo key in our, in our example as well. So basically we need to install the expo key and by that npm command, I will not do it because I already have it. Then we will just use that expo in command to create the React Native. So it will just check, check those few nodes that and here we have a few templates. So I prefer to work with the TypeScript. So we will check that when TypeScript template. So it will install a few JavaScript dependencies and then we will continue. Yes, several seconds and then, then we will continue. Uh, okay, while we are waiting, can I have a quick question? Sure. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for a very informative and easy to read slides. Uh, so my question is, um, if Ionic runs into a web view, uh, is it possible to do live updates as part of the framework or is everything stored only on a device and we can update it only through default stores, uh, App Store and Google Play? You mean during development, if you have the, to have the live updates, did they, well, did they get it correctly? Yeah, 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 of course, during development and maybe even for the uh, customers as well. I mean, like to push some code uh, to not resubmit the application to the stars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, 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 so regarding the development, I just show you during the demo how, to, how, how we can utilize it. Regarding the deployment, there is, there is in, in both libraries, there is the way to do it. Uh, in the Ionic, it was like the Ionic deploy, now it's called the Ionic upflow, I believe. Uh, and in the React Native, there is also like the code push supported by Microsoft, but I'm not sure how it's evolved because they moved to Microsoft App Center and Microsoft now tries to duplicate App Center. So I'm not sure. I believe there is a way for the React Native too, but I didn't like uh, track that <laughs> landscape often. So. Maybe I don't have a good answer now, yeah, but I believe th th they support it. You just need to find that answer. Mm -hmm. That's the solution. So basically here we like just created the bootstrap so we can have some hints here. So we can like CD to our repos, to our folder. Then we can start a web server here by them start. We can run like the Android and also web. So we will just CD to the right community. And here I also like to, to install them during the Expo image picker. It's our, it's our plugin from the Expo that will use to access the camera and the images. And then I will just uh, use npm start to start the, the, the web server developer tools. Let me just open that. Viver again, so you will see my device as well. So here you can see that we have like the um, developer server. It's micro bundler in the React Native world. So um, on the Android device, you need the quickest way to use Expo, and Expo provides you already um, the Expo um, application that you host your um, Expo Go application that you host your application during like, the development. Uh, so in order to do it, to, to use it, you as can as to scan your code. Mm, let me just do it. And if you like hook my application here, or I can like press A and you open also in the Android. So here is like our, our application. And if you start doing, it will be um, reloading. So let me just, actually, I didn't want it to do that. I wanted to do it in the Visual Studio Code, actually. Yeah, so let's open it in through the Visual Studio Code because we need to do some coding as well. Mm, so mm, here we we'll also like launch a terminal, probably resize it a bit to see how it is. Okay, with me. With, uh, here, yeah. So, and here I will do npm start here. And this time I will press A to open the Android emulator. It tells us that it opened it in the Android, so we'll have our application here. So, here we can explore that we have like the, our packages on file. Here we have our scripts. We have like the our dependencies that we're using the Expo, we're using React, React Native, and that our plugin React like Picker is like in the type script and type definitions, of course. And in order to do simple demo, we have like that up, up just on this is Expo configuration, we will not touch it. You work with the app of this one here. So here, if you can see, we will just delete those. 
in the table as I look it's okay. So for some reason we cannot connect to it. It sometimes happens. We can like the open application again to to have our application our live remote working. So it will be bonding. Yeah, yeah. So I already deleted it, so you don't see anything. Okay, so in order to consume it, we just need a few, a few buttons here. Let me just uh, create a few buttons. So I need a button. As you can see, this Visual Studio do a great job here to, to do the import. For me, yeah, as you can see, we already have like the built-in some errors here, yeah, so that's they just say that but the button cannot have um, you should provide buttons and type in it. Um. Okay, my phone just Okay, so, um, okay. so we have one button, then we need to make another button, let's call it gallery. Yeah, and you can see that we have that button here. And we want it to style them, so let's wrap it to the view. It will look like that one, and we wanted to have it uh, horizontally. So let's create another container style for it. So it's here, it's how we define the style sheet in React Native. So we have the style sheet class, and we already have like a container, we will use another. The, here in the React Native, we use the Flexbox model, so we will. I do the styling and the reality using the full flex model as well. So let me just put the flex direction here. So, Okay, and in order to use it, we need, instead of using style, we use the style class. This is the style here. Yeah, but not in that way. To use the JavaScript and use the style subject styles. So let's create the style subject in the button bar and we can see that style class. Yeah, in that way. And I wanted also to put some justify contents here. In between. <clears throat> Here we have these two buttons. And in order to, to consume our plugin, we just need to open it to, to input it. Yeah, so we just import it and then we just need to to call the APIs. And we just copy paste those APIs to save time. 
So basically we have two methods, open gallery and open. So here you can see that we use the image picker object and we just launch camera or launch images and, and checking the result and set image, but we still don't have the set image. So in order to have the set image, we need to use something like the state to store it and we'll use the standard react use state hook here. And yeah, it tells us that new state is not available. We just ask Visual Studio to import it. So it imported new state from the React. Now we are fine. And the last thing that we need, we just need to hook other methods. So we will uh, hook on press open camera here. And here on press. So as you can see, the library what works. So and we can just see if it works. So as you can see, camera works. We can shoot it, use it. Huh, okay. Yeah, the last is I forget that we need some image to hold that image. Now it just Put an image, image here as well. I will put an image and I need the call stack here actually. Yeah. As you can see, it, the user developer specifically created told you that he not find the variable image and you can just hit comment. Okay. So let's provide the search for it. URI in the image. And what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. uh, we have an image, we have an image here. Um, I believe that we probably need also to import image. I'm not sure why it doesn't import it for me or not. We need to open that image object as well. So I believe that now we have everything in place. We just do it again. Okay, we have some error. So the image was taken, but it doesn't, doesn't display in that source. What error we have? Can find a variable image? That's actually strange, but we find it here. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm, no, no. Maybe in lowercase image. Uh, no, the stack. This is this is our image, and it, we, we we will have it. You mean that that image lowercase? No, this is correct. Actually, this was the mm -hmm. one. So that one should work basically. Um, let me just Maybe we need styling for image, like flex one or something. Mm. No, like sizes. Yeah, size. Yeah, sizes. Sizes may do a trick. Yeah, actually, if you have the sizes, let's like, like let's do this.
Hmm. Nice game of fact. Okay. okay, that was still that. So we have an image, we have a color. Okay, what's going on here? Evolution should work, but I don't understand why it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so it likes the tooking from the gallery and we definitely receive it, but for some reason we did not display it here. This is strange. Okay, let, let me just copy past my prepared code. We will see exactly the same, but I'm not sure why it doesn't work. Okay, let me just copy the same way out. You just have the okay, and what's and what changed? <laughs> Ah, style, okay. Okay, style and styles, okay. Makes sense, makes sense. So, yeah, you need to be careful with the polar or the singular. So let's try, but just again, it will replace the image. Yeah, if you don't work with the technology day by day, <laughs> you may bump into those issues. <laughs> so it's like, this is how it looks for the React. Yeah? So as you can see here, just to sum up, we just use the new state to store a state of the image from the React, it's the new state hook. We also use the image picker from the installed plugin. We just have two methods to open to the image picker at the camera or the library. And we just set, check the result for it and set the image when the user selected it. And we style it a bit even slightly out. Do you guys have any questions? Seems not. Okay. Uh, so it's like the uh, expo experience, and it's like what's expo so it's like a managed flow, yes. Yeah? So you just use expo and they do many things behind the scenes here. Yeah, for example, you cannot see like the Android and those projects um, that you will see free and okay. Yeah. But in order, for example, this is great for start here yeah, because you can like uh, leverage if you think from the expo already, they have also good documentation. But in case if you wanted like to, the capability of that is not enough, you can in any time do something like convert from the managed workflow to the bar, bar workflow. So I can like use the expo eject command. And what it does, it will just hook me up, hook me up from the expo. Yeah. So it will talk me about my Android package name. Let's call it like example. And yeah, the same for the bundle ID and we will see what it will have after those comments on finish time. Okay, one well, prime case that we have something in the chat. Probably check that. What was about the corridor? I would know, okay, I'm already, I already answered that. Yeah, so you see that it was like already created the Android library, Android directory, and you can see and it's, that it's like the Android project team, so we can. Just open and run it, and the same is for the EOS and this is it itself. So, so this project like injected us from the expo, and we can consume like what to tweak our native application if we wanted. Um, 
more granular then. So you have the Xyle Android project and you have uh, Xyle's project, so you can hook up if you need it. Basically, I recommend to start with Expo and in many workflows you can do it. Like even you can package up through the Expo without like doing the Android and an iOS project. But in case if you need to, yeah, you can use that eject command to to have that to expose to you those native project and you can use it to tweak them a bit, like manage them more closely. So that I wanted to show you that there is a possibility to do that to the evolution of the solution. So this is how we do it in the React Native. And let's see how we do it in the React, so the React in the one again in the React. So let's go to the, uh, the image project and create the React one again. So in order to, to deal with the Ionic, yeah, we need that Ionic claim. I already have it, so I will not do it, yeah. So Ionic default, I believe, start with the, with the Angular. So I need to I also start the Ionic, use a blank template, but I tell it that we need the React. So and it will create the React files. As you can see, it's already enables integration with the capacitor as a default one. Yeah. There is also an option to, to specify code over here if you want it. But as I mentioned, Earlier, the default one is the capacitor. So it will be hooked with the capacitor. So meanwhile, we are waiting for the generation because it's mostly the most time consuming process. Maybe someone has some other questions that they may they, they wanted to ask. So they suggest you want to this see I only can't we don't know for that time. Yeah. It is already created the application for us. We can CD to Ionic to check that. And in order to do it, so I also want to install the camera from the capacitor plugins. So we install the camera, then we need to actually create, install the capacitor and dry it because by default they will not install the platform project. I've did it for Android. If you want to support iOS, you should do also for the iOS, but we don't do it um, in this example for the iOS, just to set them. But we install the dependency, then we need to run that uh, NPX cap at a project to just the generate Android project. So first comment, we installed the dependency. And here we added Android platform. And in order to build Android, you need Ionic command. Command build to build our project. So it will package our project to, to use in the, you know, the Android device. So it will get the mass production build files and use Android device. So it installed and told that we can use the NPM server to kill the server, develop server, but we will not do it. We will do like Ionic capacitor, the shortcut for capacitor, then run Android. 
then we tell L, it means the library that wanted to support the library wallet and also external to a lot of device to connect. So it will be external address nodes and local host. So it allows us to allow external device to connect into it. So here I will okay, pick my device. So it will try to run and deploy to the Android device. It will take some time. It will see how it. Uh, so it starts development server, packets up, and you deploy the PK to the Android device. With that is webpack as the JavaScript bundler under the hood for those who are interested in. Uh, and where it's going to be one, just, my device should be started already. Can try again. Oh, and then the build, that's fine. Not sure if it works. Okay, yeah. Here we go. I'm not sure what was happening the previous time. So here we have extract and uh, yeah. So let me also let me just open it in the result of the code. Um, Uh, so here we can explore our project also a bit. We have the same packages on file that have more dependencies to it. So from the capacitor three, if you check the documentation, please check closely because they did uh, like a big change uh, when moving from the capacitor to the capacitor three. Previously, you need to install only the capacitor core and it will have many plugins already in the capacitor core. In the capacitor trees, they changed the approach and now like several, like the plugins that you need in every project, like the some here to the back keyboard status bar, uh, they are detected with a separate dependency. Yeah. And for the, for that camera API, it also, you can see that in some tutorials that you should not install the capacitor camera, from, but from the capacitor so you need to install the separate module because we did some, some more granular control. They, Broke the packages to the uh, more, more smaller ones instead of putting everything in the Korean. So basically, here we have the application, and here we have some application and application router in place. So we will be starting with the home page here. Let me just show you the device and the library how it works. So here we have exit uh, React, and we have that unique, unique controls. Here we have this is like the, our main content page. We have a header. We have the two buttons at the header. We have the blank template with the image picker. And we will see that it change. Yeah, it changes then and. We have some export container. You can see that we have the components here as like the some already available container in the demo. We can safely delete that. Doesn't matter for our example here. And for save time, maybe we'll just copy paste the code. So we'll just replace that one. It's already prepared out. Yeah, probably need to. Okay. Okay. My iron button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, of course. 
Of course, you need to import those things as well. So let me just um, change import as well. I just like import controls from the Ionic. Also, I will use the same new state from the React. We will use it later to start state. Import the camera from the capacity camera and we, uh, we now we can hook up the camera. Okay, yeah, it might complain that you don't have the camera code now. Yeah. Okay, let me just quickly open that camera. It's also not very interesting code. It's because it's based in here. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so basically what we have, we have the same state here. If we use the image, uh, I put that instead of image, we use the iron image component that will use the source image. Also, we have two buttons. Instead of using a button, we use iron button. We also put some uh, some already built-in uh, theme. So we already support themes. And we have like the primary, secondary core, etc. So we can use those. And we will just use the camera. Camera has that get photo method. And here we have a search in that API that we told us is it open the camera of photos and the result type should be in the URI because all types have several types but we need it in the URL for the our example. Yeah, let's check how it works. So we can open the camera and it will be rendered here. We also can open the gallery. Huh. Yeah, in the gallery will not work. And this is expected. So the gallery will not work, and this is expected. And in order to fix it, this is one of the examples that I will not show you what you need to do. Yeah? But in order to resolve that, uh, I will just show you how to do it. So we just need the capacitor uh, camera. We just need to follow them all the time. Yeah. So basically what we need, so here we have a documentation how to use the capacitor camera and what we need, this is Android permissions. So we need to do those permissions. Uh, but yeah, the one trick is that we can find, of course, our manifest in Android application. So we just need to open the Android application, as you see, main Java, no, each other. Manifest, yeah. And you may want it, as I want it, just to add permissions here, but don't do this. Yeah. If, you, if you see the Android manifest.reach file present, that um, just stop your, your, your development server first, because in order to, to use the live reloading, they only do some extra stuff and also like, probably add some properties to the Android manifest and if you like modify it, then your changes will gone. Now we have only the one Android manifest, we can safely add the permissions here to use external storage. Just put it here after the internet. Okay. And we run I'll run the development server again. Let's do it.
Okay, so now we can check. Here and disconnect it. We try. Okay, let's open it. Okay, maybe some cable. Which we can show that now camera works. We can open the gallery, pick any photo, and it will be displayed here. Yeah, and you can see that also the Android manifest contains our changes and that origin manifest mm, also exists. Probably can change with that in origin it works, but I'm not sure. For me, it's better to stop it and to do the changes and rerun it again when you need to change some native parts of it. So on the last thing, I just want you to show where like, you can compare those two projects. Yes, yeah, so let's go to the um, that uh, solution meetup um, um, yeah. in the hierarchy. So we can have our two project together. And let's open like the TSX from the React Native and that home page from the Unic. Right, we split them so we can see them side by side. And let me so what we can see here, yeah. So we can see here that the, the code mostly the same. Like we we use the state from React here, we use the state from React here. The difference is in the UI controls. Here we use the native control from the React Native. Here we use the styled control from the Ionic yeah, React. And the usage of the plugins uh, a bit different, yeah. So they have different APIs by Still, the JavaScript API, so we, we use you write them in the same language by different coding okay, according to those APIs. Yeah. And the styling, like the render function, is different because it uses different controls here. Yeah. And styling is different here. We can use like the, the CSS, you yeah, didn't style CSS here, but we can use any CSS here to style the controls. And here we should use that style sheets provided by the React Native. So basically, the most logic is the same. You can use like, like the action anxious HTTP client to get your request, hook up with Redux to have like, some uh, centralized storage. And the, 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 those, the, those things will be the same. Yeah? Those things will be same between the React Native and React. Yeah? In that example, I wanted to show you the differences mostly because the same things will be the same. There is like not, there is no point to pay attention to it yet. So they, they will be the same as they can see. We can even convert here yeah, one project to another and just need to probably to write the right way if you need it. So that's it uh, for the demo. Do we have questions for the demo, guys? Okay. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. Uh, one question. Uh, is mm -hmm. it possible to use uh, Cordova, uh, no, vanilla Cordova projects uh, just uh, in initialized uh, capacitor project? Just to push uh, inside and use? Uh, no. <laughs> no between the Cordova and capacitor because they do the same thing. Yeah? So capacitor and Cordova is the same list. Yeah? They, they provide the, the, like the hybrid web runtime yeah but you can you can use the uh, capacitor as a capacitor of cordova itself without without any like the library javascript you can use the geneva javascript you can write cordova also provides some bootstrap it to bootstrap uh, a project it will like contain probably the index html and the review i did it quite a while yeah but it's still possible cordova have also and the possibility to generate use a project 
And you can use the vanilla JavaScript there. You can patch any page or jQuery mobile, open code, just whatever. Yeah. So you, you can use it yeah, with it. Yeah. And you also can use the capacitor without Ionic as well yeah, if you need it. Just separate sometimes. And so you can use is a Cordova capacitor without Ionic, yeah, with, with some other library, either VanillaJS or any other JavaScript library that will like, run in the mobile web game. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, so let's continue with the presentation then. So we will go through those demos and then I just show you like the popularity in the general specifics of the NPM trends. So as you can see this for the last year, so as you can see the React Native here, a big, big, big traction game. And the, the Ionic is still like in the site 30K, I believe in the React Native. We have huge popularity. So let's go to the what to use here. Yeah. So my, my takeaways on those things, what I would recommend here, yeah, if you have the new mobile project, the mobile first project, uh, and you are not constrained by the budget, yeah, so better use React Native, it's more popular. It provides you better time for different platforms. If you, if you see that you will see, you have the unique design, yeah, you have a unique design, it's better to use React Native because you will style you need to study, you study it according to your design language. Yeah. For the Ionic, you can tweak the Ionic, Ionic components and now they use those variables that it will be easier to do so, yeah, but you will still like have some defined controls. So you need to like to redefine all the right styles to probably tweak to your design. Yeah. So if you have the native project with a good design, but it is React Native also, if you need to have better control over security, like maybe you have more plugins to the, like, the secure storage, et cetera. Unix still have like, the feature in secure storage, but they don't, doesn't provide you so much control. That makes it quite more granular control over like, the security and encryption. If you, if your application needs to support like the offline disconnected space on data sync, that maybe it's better choice here. You can either hook it with Realm or other libraries uh, that will provide you that functionality of the shelf. So you don't need to write it on your own. And if you depend on some native dependencies besides like some standard ones, like the camera storage, that uh, interact native, you have a better change to find something or the interact in the green unit unit. I just provide some subset of the device capabilities so that uh, share with the web, like the camera storage, etc. The same as if it for the PDAs and that, yeah, but um, they also provide the Bluetooth, but um, the actually just a few of them direct native. Yeah. If you want like the some some simple some simple application that like will be online only applications, or you have like the web application you want to reuse the same code in your in your of course the web application you want to reuse the code and just have the mobile client as well in some minimal time you 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 can use your own it can, it can be either act or maybe application like the, in the also in the of you you can easily create a, Wrapping the Ionic app and use it again. And if you wanted to support, like go to the PDA approach instead of the my application, you can also consider Ionic. You will create the they also support the progressive web apps. Yeah? So you will not publish to the stores that can host those applications on your site and you will be wrapped to the PDAs. If you want to, to create quickly some MVPs to demonstrate some concept, Ionics are bad in this case because it's quicker to develop in Ionic as an interact native and you have many components already in play to team. And if you also the same like the, if you time to market matters, want to show some quick prototype of version one, you can also start with Ionic. Yeah. And 
as a main purpose of my president was that um, don't afraid to start with the ONIC because you can like transition to the React native uh, quite easily. Definitely you will need to rewrite some UI layer, but many of you like the core logic will be reused. Now. So if you like have some constraints in place and want to demo things faster, you can consider you only to show it first and then transition to the React Native if needed later. So this is my recommendations. And the last piece is like the questions, but it should be actually, okay, probably need the slide again. So actually it was questions, are also some epic battle. So the epic battle is mostly like the clickbait, but the purpose of the battle was, is I also like to hear from you. I've seen that many of you also worked with React Native or some hybrid like Ionic stuff here. What do you think? Is better from your perspective. Uh, what maybe challenges you have, or some uh, pain points you have, and it's a time like to discuss that. Uh, if if you uh, let me stay, let me say, I think the Ionic and uh, uh, together with Cordova and uh, etc. They it looks like they uh, really old guys with trying to to look um, uh, with with new jackets, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, um, if if I would choose the new project, <laughs> I think I definitely will choose React Native. That looks and feels natively. That's that's my opinion, but I don't know too deep uh, uh, this uh, Cordoba Ionic technologies. But just first look, first several looks, uh, uh, give me this feeling. No. Yeah, I totally understand your point. It, it's like more modern, more quick, you have better traction, more popular. Yeah, so we have better, like the more use cases and the companies using the React Native. Yeah, so. The Tatian in the Any 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 other thoughts, guys, who, who want to share your, your experience? Okay, I think that's it today. Um, so thank you. Thank you, audience, for your time and attention. I hope that the presentation was useful for you. Yeah. And in case if you have any questions later, yeah, feel free to contact me. I will be, good, be glad to help in what I can help.